Over the last week or so, I've been playing around with the new Quest 3, which aims to provide, in my opinion, the best mixed reality device available to the mass market that is low cost and also very, very lightweight. Well, today, I want to challenge that and see if the Quest 3 really delivers on that promise. Can this device actually work well with mixed reality? How easy is it to develop experiences in mixed reality with this device? Well, stick around and we're gonna be checking that out. All right, guys, so this is one of the demos that they provide you with mixed reality on the Oculus Quest 3. And to be honest, this blew my mind, specifically because they're, you know, the ceiling, it's coming down, it's using seeing understanding to be able to position the spaceship. You can see how it's landing. And this is a table that I map as a table by using the scene setup. So really, really cool use of technology. And as you guys can see, the quality of the model looks really, really high quality. And that is a big improvement on this Quest 3, which it uses the new Snapdragon generation two, which I believe is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why this is running so smooth. The scene understanding process on this made it look so much better. I think the calculation of the polygons as it is, you know, as I'm walking around, just made it look really good. You can see the guys trying to get into the, you know, my environment. And at some point in here, you're gonna see that it's going to, it's going to break through because it keeps trying and, and looks like now we have an open wall, which takes us to a completely different dimension. So you get two guns and with the two guns, you know, you can shoot and you can destroy the wall. So we'll just keep watching this and I'll just, I, I really want to hear your reactions as far as like, what you think about this experience. So on this other experience, I just wanted to place basically a browser around this area. This happened to be my YouTube channel and I'm gonna have it playing behind the scenes so that I can hear in the background, can grab the controller. You can see the pasture quality is great. It looks a lot better than it used to. You can see I can read the text on this character and I put different objects just to, you know, to play around in this case with the iPhone. I can't really read the text on the iPhone. I could but it's not really legible. I would say it's, uh, you know, if I'm, I don't have glasses because I wear glasses, this is how I would actually, you know, look, I wear contacts. So it is decent, it's not the best, you know, uh, pass-through quality just yet, but it is a huge improvement over the previous version. In this case, I was able to read the book and the letters were legible. And like I said, it's not 100% high quality 2020 vision, but it is a big improvement and, and it was really fun to have the browser, you know, running behind the scenes while I grab other objects. So I could see these being used, you know, like we have seen these with cooking and getting recipes and just doing other actions as you use mixed reality. This is actually really comfortable too. It didn't, I didn't sweat when I was wearing this. And you can see here, I'm watching a video and um, I'm really not being as active, but I just ran the other experience and I had more movement. I'm still not feeling the, you know, the device being as heavy. This also works with hand tracking, which is great. This is all the built-in operating system, hand tracking, and I can touch, you know, different elements on the browser, interact with it. It has the direct touch features, which is really cool. That was added to the operating system. All right, so for this next demo, I wanna show you how we can use the new scene understanding features and the depth sensors to be able to map this area, but also map the table that I'm going to be using with Cubism, which is a really cool app that uses pass-through technology, also hand tracking. You can see how it's also using hand gestures to be able to position the actual menu. So it's using that plane, that mesh that we capture through the scene setup to be able to position. So this app is beautiful and I really, really recommend it. It's actually a game, so just make sure that you check it out because it's really fun. It also does hand tracking pretty, pretty well. And these are just some of the, the box settings that they provide. And when I say they, it's actually one developer. So it's, it's really cool what he was able to create with this. You can also adjust the pass-through settings if you want it to be lighter, has more have more contrast have, you know, different style of pass-through. It's all available. And yeah, I was able to beat the game as well, at least the intro. <laughs> all 
Okay, so on this next one, I wanted to show you how Immerse works. This is the Vision OS prototype that I've been working with the video series that I'm making. So you can see that the text is really legible. In this case, I have four different screens. The simulator works. I'm communicating with it via Wi-Fi. So my computer is on the next room, I would say about 20 feet away and it still performs really great. The pasture quality makes this look really, really good. I'm also using the Magic Keyboard and also the Apple Mouse. So, so things work really well. I really recommend this app. You can see the text quality. It's really hard to see exactly how it looks because I'm not showing you through the glasses, but trust me that with the new Quest pass-through, things look a lot better. The code is also very legible and I was able to read everything a lot better. And also the headset is so comfortable that I think I'm gonna be using this way more than I used to, especially now that I have a battery pack that will add additional hours to my usage. So I really recommend this app and this was a really good experience of me using Immerse. All right guys, so let's take a look at the hardware in more detail. Here's a Quest 3, which starts at 499 USD. Here's what comes inside the box. And yes, this is amazing. We have a power supply and I'm gonna pass this information to Apple. I also ordered two accessories, which I felt were a must to get. A head strap, which I ordered the Meta Elite head strap with battery for $129.99 as of the time of this video. And I was starting to regret it, to be honest, since I love my Bobo VR straps, which I used with my Quest devices previously. But after using these, I would say this feels really high quality. It seamlessly integrates to your headset. I also like the additional two hours and I don't need to take the battery out to charge it. It's all built into a head strap. I also ordered the Meta Charging Dock for $129.99, which looks very, very similar to the Anchor Charging Dock released previously for the Quest 2, which was about $100 when I initially purchased it. Well, not to leave out specs, here are the specs I believe are the most important ones for the Quest 3 which we're going to be comparing with the Quest 2 and also the Quest Pro. There's a Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2, which is now part of this device versus the Generation 1 from previous Gen devices. According to Qualcomm, this new GPU offers up to 2.5x peak performance with a 50% increase in power efficiency. The performance of the GPU has also increased by more than 33%. RAM is 8 gigs on the Quest 3, better than 6 gigs from the Quest 2, but less than 12 gigs from the Quest Pro. Display got an amazing upgrade of 2K per eye versus 1800 by 1920-ish resolution from other Quest devices. Refresh rate of 90 Hz up to 120 Hz on the Quest 3, which we had with the Quest 2, but better than what we have on the Quest Pro today, which maxes out at about 90 Hz. We also have a larger field of view of 110 horizontal, by 96 vertical, which is an improvement across all Meta devices. Optics also got an upgrade to Pancake Lenses versus Freshnel, which is now lining up with the lenses found in the Quest Pro. We now have color pass-through cameras, which is a huge improvement, and also four megabit pixels versus the grayscale cameras found on the Quest 2 or the one megabit pixel camera that we have on the Quest Pro. Battery also has a slight improvement of 2.2 hours of runtime versus the two hours that we have on the Quest 2 generation. And short of 0.3, which decreased from the 2.5 hours of battery life that we have on the Quest Pro. Couple of things that are really important about this headset are the speakers that are built into the strap itself. There's also a manual IPD to adjust the lenses. The charging dock connects to it via pins, which are basically located on the bottom area. There's also a USB-C that is located on this area. There's also a standard headphone jack, and you can see all the cameras around this headset, including the depth sensor cameras. All right, so to get this device set up for development is very, very easy, just like it was with previous Quest generations, such as the Quest, Quest 2 or Quest Pro. Now the Quest 3, all you have to do is download the Meta app for iOS or Android, pair it up to your mobile app via Wi-Fi, enable developer mode, and if you have a PC, simply download the Meta app for Oculus Link connectivity and hook it up to your computer via USB-C 
And better yet, just use the cable that comes with it to connect it to your PC or Mac computer. To be able to run this in Unity, make sure that you download the Oculus application for your PC. Unfortunately, it's not available on Mac, but if you have a PC, this is going to be supported. You also need to connect the USB-C cable to your computer. Also go ahead and clone the Meta Advanced Features GitHub repo. Once you do that, make sure you switch everything to Android and you have your device connected. And we can select the Oculus Quest 3. Then if you have a project like I did that has already been created with the previous version, just go to the package manager and then upgrade the Oculus integration. In this case, I had Oculus integration version 56 and I ended up upgrading it to 57, which is going to work with the Oculus Quest 3. Once you get it, you know, update it, you can then go ahead and import it. You can also see the version in here and then just import all the different assets and go into the OVR camera rig and then just stick the Quest 3 option. Once you do that, go into Oculus, Oculus Project Config, and this is where we can set up controllers and hands. We can also change the hand tracking frequency. We can also change basically whether we're going to be supporting scene understanding or not. And then you can also go in and enable pass through in the same settings or you can go into the project settings and look at the checklist in order for you to enable that. But just make sure that you enable pass through support and change it to support it. Once you're done, just hit save and then just go ahead and deploy this to your device by doing build and run. Another thing that I wanted to compare was how the Quest 2 versus the Quest 3 versus the Quest Pro pass-through will look like. In these shots, I'm running the sequence showing you the pass-through quality for each one of the devices. The Quest 2, as you know, is a black and white camera. It's a monoscopic pass-through. The Quest Pro uses a stereoscopic camera, which is a one megapixel camera. And lastly, the Quest 3 has a huge upgrade to a stereoscopic with a four megapixel pass through with an added depth sensor, which gives it a really huge advantage over the other devices mentioned. The pass through quality is a huge, huge improvement. It's still not perfect, but I love the new improvements. The dock personally looks cool, but I had a hard time placing that headset on the dock. It might be that the magnets don't attach well. I still need to use it to find out more. The Elite Strap is one that I really recommend. I really like it over the Bobo VR that I was using with my previous device. It's still great, both of them are great, but this one blends great with the device. So I really, really recommend it. The only thing that I didn't really like is that I had to spend a lot more. So it's $4.99 for the headset, then adding the actual strap on top, then you have to add a carrying case, then you have to add the station, the actual docking station to charge it. So it can get really pricey if you think about that really close to the Quest Pro, but it's still not as expensive as some of the high-end devices available today. So do I recommend it? Absolutely. Well, the main question is, are you ready to start developing with VR and mixed reality? Well, make sure that you hit the notification bell and subscribe because it's gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos with the Quest 3 and also with Unity. Thank you guys.